नमस्ते आई आई लव मूवीज एंड आई एम गोइंग टू शेयर विद यू अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग क्लिप ऑफ अ मूवी फ्रॉम अ मूवी कॉल्ड टर्म ऑफ एंडियरमेंट एंड लुक व्हाट हैपेंस दिस लेडीज डॉटर इज बीइंग ऑपरेटेड एंड सी व्हाट हैपेंस टू हर इन द पोस्ट ऑपरेटिव पीरियड वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग well not all mothers or all families maybe as vociferous as this vibrant actor but yes they all go through a similar plight when they see their children in acute untreated pain and today the best modality we have to treat pain is p is regional anesthesia surely in pediatric population so we in this next 20 minutes to go we are going to look at it in a very nutshell just to see the scope and play of the subject why do we really go after pediatric regional anesthesia because this is one of the best modalities to handle perioperative pain the best tools that we have it's very balanced because it adds analgesia to anesthesia very profound analgesia as such so it really balances out the whole job it's economical less a pico stay less a stay in the hospitals have been proved it's scientific in the sense apart from the most tangible benefit of analgesia there are certain other subtle benefits such as a positive metabolic response a positive immunologic response a positive uh, response towards neuro behavioral changes because there is there is less pain in the perioperative period that they experience uh, hypovascular uh, field so lesser blood loss or there are many other positive impact of regional anesthesia other than analgesia so yes it's a beneficial work and it's time tested time and again we have proved the safety of this the slide is busy i know but we are here discussing what all blocks are possible whatever is possible in an adult is possible in a neonate and the modalities are almost similar however the indications have to be appropriate and the exact expertise that is required to perform these blocks and small kids have to be around having said this let us see the most common blocks that one need to know in pediatric population to begin with of course is the first good old caudal epidural block where the baby is kept in lateral position and of course uh, the posterior superior iliac spines are palpated the sacrococ the the sacral corno is identified the skin subcutaneous tissue and the sacrococcygeal ligament is pierced the give is experienced the calculated local anesthetic dose is injected now here we there are certain special needles with stilets as well so that we can prevent the skin tissue getting inside straight into the epidural space we can use ultrasound here too so this is the longitudinal axis here is the this is the dural sac and you will see the needle coming in here as i told you these are only glimpses we can't go in the details of each block so this is how it would uh, look like when we start injecting this is the dural sac and this is the needle if we are your training students you can show them every time they insert especially in very small babies so this is you you will see that the drug displaces the posterior and the anterior dura and ascends in the central neuroaxial conduit what we can also do is we can actually wait at the surgically congruent into vert, uh, vertebral level and see if the posterior dura really sags down once the drug reaches there so it's real it's a telltale sign that indeed the local anesthetic has reached that particular level so here you go you will see this posterior dura getting down now using caudal epidural portal to in to insert the catheters as such it's pretty well known now this is how you will see the catheter going up sometimes you will see the catheter going higher up sometimes is it you will see it in the anterior epidural space you will see the fall of the dura due to the injection of the local anesthetic coming to the lumbar epidurals again so lumbar or 
epidurals are also very, very commonly used. We use the loss of resistance, especially by saline. The appropriate intervertebral level is palpated and usually 19 or 20 gauge epidural needle is used. So this is how we go. Skin insertion and subcutaneous tissue insertion. Then we remove the stillet. We attach the LOR syringe filled with saline to it. Once the assembly is created, the dominant hand holds the needle and the non-dominant hand pushes the plunger. And very gently, the entire assembly, as it were, is advanced ahead till the give of the ligamentum flavum is felt and is actually elicited, which is unmistakable. The introducer is put in and the required amount of epidural catheter is inserted inside. We can even see this under ultrasound and you will see the flicker here. Now coming to another uh, everyday block is an axillary block. You saw the glimpse of how it can be seen, the probe especially and the needle. This is how it goes. So it need not always be a hockey stick probe. It can be any high frequency linear probe and this is how the needle gets in. Now we, we shall go to the ultrasound scan. So here it goes. This is the intraclavicular area, the femoral block, this is the femoral nerve, artery, vein, femoral nerve, the drug around, you can even see the catheter going here. You can give it with peripheral nerve stimulator as well. Very commonly used block again. Sciatic, so this is the sciatic nerve. This is the local anesthetic all around. We can even put the catheters here. This is the catheter coming out as if it, you can see the catheter and the Tuhi needle that is used, the longitudinal section of the sciatic nerve. And you will see the catheter walking along. So these were just the glimpses of what is possible. So these are the most common blocks that at least we use in our practice. Now let's uh, go ahead and uh, see which is the important block. We would still say that it is the caudal epidural, which is the RS. VP. Although we know that every day almost a new block emerges, but this has retained its place because it's the most relevant block. It's the most simple block. It's the most valuable block. And it is a portal through which even continuous catheterization is so much possible in very small babies where we really are so, so worried to give analgesics on the floors or even in the PICUs. We are more worried about the side effects than the effects of analgesics, like such as opioids. And hence, the caudal epidural really remains still a very, very valuable portal for us. Coming to the, the most recently uh, described blocks in pediatric irrigation anesthesia, well, they are as follows. I'm going to run the video through it for you to see. First will be the QL, that is the quadratus lumborum block. The assembly is as follows. So this is the injection done. This is the QL muscle. This is the the, the transverse process and the vertebral body, a bunny rabbit as it were. The psoas is here. This is the nerve root coming out and this is the erector spinae and this is the QL. So, and this is the abdominal wall muscles. So you will see the QL2 here, QL1 here. This will be, yeah. Coming to the erector spinae, these are the transverse processes. If you want to see at the level of la minus, then this is how it will, the needle will come in. I, be at the tip of the transverse process or go towards the lamina. This is how it would happen. This is the erector spinae. Paravertebral, again, lying down. This is the typical paravertebral space, the transverse, yes. And this is the block that we really practice very often, the fascia iliaca compartment block. This is the iliacus muscle as such, and the needle really walks in straight like this. And we create a lot of space by injecting half the calculated volume, so 10 kilogram child. Uh, so we use around 5 ml going first, open up the fascia iliaca, and then thread in the catheter inside. In grown-up children, we have even inserted or injected dyes in. We've uh, shown that they almost reach till T4, I, I, sorry, L4, and haven't seen them really going all throughout, but yes, they have uh, kind of, you know, demarcated the psoas at the lower border. 
Now coming to dosages, make it very simple. You can use bupivacaine, tropivacaine, levobupivacaine. Anything, is, all, all drugs can be used in the volume of 0.5 ml per kilogram and the concentration as given here for any peripheral block and lignocanadrenaline for any peripheral block. So this is a very, very simple way of remembering it. I'm not going to read out the whole table. It's for, um, for you to refer. Now coming to local anesthetic in caudal epidural, the, here the story is a little different. Now we can, what holds really true is the, cal, the volume and how far we reach with the volume. In very small babies, this really holds true. So for uh, lower limb and penile surgeries, 0.5 ml per kilogram. For hernia and OPEX is 1 to 1.25 ml per kilogram. 1.25 ml, uh, ml per kilogram is a good volume for slightly grown up kids. And lower thoracic, 1.25 ml per kilogram. Once the lordotic curve really sets in, this may not hold true, is what our clinical experience is. Now, if you want to inf start infusions for continuous blocks, this is your dosage. Is bupivacaine really unsafe? And it's is ropivacaine really uh, very, very safe? Actually, it so happens that the Tmax of ropivacaine comes a little later than bupivacaine. So if you are a busy pediatric anesthesia practitioner, probably you've given a caudal epidural or whatever block with bupivacaine, it's going to peak up right in front of you and not when the child is in the recovery. So, however, ropivacaine has a beautiful pharmacokinetics and dynamic profile for infusions. With regional anesthesia in your hand and you being very comfortable, you might uh, go over a little broad in your indications and use them as to treat ischemias. So we have done certain uh, cases which really helped us out by increasing the vascularity. They were almost, these fingertips were almost going blue and they have changed back and we could salvage extremities. So something that would, that the tips would have fallen off is actually holding his spectacles here, this kid. In sick neonates, actually we could just give whiff of sevoflurane and drain even their shoulders. So this is how we have applied regionals in many facets. Coming to something that could have been otherwise an contraindication, but if we have ultrasound and we understand how to pick up the novel looking uh, architecture as such, especially of the central neuroaxial conduit, then yes, we could go ahead and put in uh, catheters where we could really not do it before. So this is this is this is what was revealed to us when we did more and more of it. Coming to continuous perineural catheters and compartment syndrome. Now that's something that we really are worried all the time. But if you do put perineural catheters, then you see to it that you 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 give them a sensory block and not the motor one, so that the motor movements remain intact. Don't give them a a dead extremity is what I'm trying to tell you. It, because if you have a radial club hand and this kind of a spine, a very, uh, very mild block, in fact, is going to do the trick. So a little bit of NSA and a, little, and a ropivacaine of 0.2% in the operative, perioperative area with good movements, in fact, is going to is going to really nail the management of pain for this crucial uh, invasive cases. We have used thoracic epidural as a diagnostic and therapeutic tool for intractable arrhythmias. If you want to know more about and if time permits, maybe we can discuss more about this, uh, which I would love to share. We have kept catheters. We have told ourselves that yes, a sympathectomy hence is going to help this baby or these children as such. Now, if you really want to put catheters for major surgeries, I know that there are a lot of other modalities that have come up, such as say erector spinase, such as QLs, yes, of course, such as tap blocks, yes, of course they are, but something like, uh, like extra fees, yes, when there is an orthopedic team and a surgical team working, invasive procedure, there is still a big scope for continuous epidural, even in neonates, but then it needs the respect. So this is how we put our epidural catheters very away from any other infusion and we label it well. Sometimes 
however alluring abdominal wall blocks are intense abdomens this is what happens to them this is what happens to the wall of the abdomen it's very difficult even with ultrasound to really say which is what which may not be a very good idea doesn't happen all the time but just to give you another perspective of modalities so how will in nutshell what would we really look at pediatric anesthesia pediatric regional anesthesia as such is there are certain yums and niyams as we call in our language so we certain pledges so we i will keep intralipid available then i will keep i will keep in mind to choose the most appropriate block and equipment i will choose the safest drug dose and modality i will inject after negative aspiration and in alicots i will wait for the block to act or be aware that the block may not have taken up yet i will monitor the block action and infusion in the post operative period till the catheters are removed in case i have put a catheter i will make all efforts to synchronize with the surgical team i will keep records of what i do and audit them i will be truthful in analyzing block efficacy take full responsibility for its failures i will keep abreast with the latest so yes thank you for listening this is the just a glimpse of what can be done with pediatric regional anesthesia thank you indeed and i hope you have enjoyed the cme thank you